All right. We're live. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we are going to be doing some miniature painting. If this is your first time here. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, we like to chat with our chat room and, uh, you know, interact with you guys. So um, the more active you are in the chat, the more entertaining I think our conversations tend to be. Although we can be pretty entertaining when we go back and forth anyways. So, uh, yeah. But today, something that I've been looking into a little bit is uh, using World Anvil for my world building. So that's, for the most part, that's what's on my mind. That's what I want to discuss. We'll probably talk about other things as well. Uh, I got a couple, uh, I have a new campaign coming up. And uh, that's one of the reasons I'm starting to look into this because I'm always looking for new ways to be organized so mm, and he needs yeah. help being organized. Sometimes. it's it's a problem oh I'm so Victor Snyder is not the Victor I thought he was oh so um there was a guy who used to run Palladium Fantasy and he had a Obsidian Portal page and he, one of the campaigns mm. he was running was um I don't remember. I think it was like called the Forgotten God or something like that. Yes, I ripped that off for our one campaign. Mm, you totally did. I did. Uh, but the idea comes from some Palladium Fantasy books. Oh. Anyways, uh, he does not appear to be that victor, it sounds like. Uh, but that's okay. Uh oh That's okay. Uh, we're still happy to have you here, Victor. You just offended him. I don't think I did. He's he, upset. He corrected me. <laughs> yeah, this is really bad like how watery this is i can't use it it doesn't bother me it bothers me because i'm trying to paint it over gray right now oh yeah you can't do that dude so i am mixing it with some not gonna now. wear our skin tone like our flesh skin tone color paint water. that we have is really really liquidy which doesn't bother me because i usually just mix it with white it's a problem for him so i'm painting this guy he looks awesome if that's focused or not because because it's on the different screen yeah Here. you gotta help me out Here you're you supposed to help me that's better so <laughs> i'm painting this guy he's pretty cool yes and yeah yeah, as Vic far as I am. Victor, we have talked about Heroes Unlimited. Um, the guy I'm thinking of runs, I, I think, strictly Palladium Fantasy. Um, it's like the Long Forgotten God campaign. It's um, basically the characters are trying to retrieve all the pieces of an uh, old god. Um, and they, I think, do different things, like grant different powers and stuff like that. Um it's really interesting, actually. But, um, yes, I did confuse you with him. And uh, I've known him for a long time, uh, going back to 2014, at least. Um, he's got a YouTube channel, too. I just can't remember okay. the channel. Yeah, I don't think he's done anything on it in a couple of years, though. But I follow a lot of people on YouTube, so I may have just missed some stuff, too. But, yeah. Gets mixed in with everything else. Yeah. Type of thing. <laughs> I am painting this guy right now. I had painted gray over his abs, not realizing that wasn't armor. So I'm using orange as a base, and then I'm going to go over it with our peach color to lighten it up, I think. But I don't know how that's going to work out. Mm, um, that's not going to work. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. I really don't. I, I didn't want them to have a peach skin tone anyway. Remember, I wanted them to be more demonic. Yeah, you should have done like green or something. No, no, no. Green. I'm not using green. Green. No, I'm gonna keep sticking with this orangish color a little bit. Oh, shoot, um, it is so watery though when I mix it with the peach. I also agree that this wizard looks like terrifying. Like, so if you could just. He looks awesome. He wants him for. Like an NPC, which is a little scary because that means he's easily going to be the bad guy. Well, I want to use him in Descent to Avernus as like one of those cultist dudes that we've been fighting. 
Like mm. he matches almost the pictures in the like the module. Like they almost match it. The way they look, like the way they're dressed and stuff. Oh really? A little bit. Huh. The only thing they don't have is a flail. A flail would really set it off. Yeah, no, this guy's got this. Yeah, no, it's cool. Side thing going on. Yep, yeah, no, that works. But yeah, so uh, anyway, so we've got a new campaign starting Saturday, and I've got a blue binder that's full of just loose notes from previous games that I've run in my homebrew world and things like that. And it's fine, but it's hard. It's not organized well. And um, in fact, it's just not organized at all yet. Um, been meaning to do that. But then I was like, well, if I'm going to organize it, and I've typed some stuff up already, but why don't I just type it up into something like an Obsidian Portal or World Anvil? And World Anvil has really got my attention lately. I've used Obsidian Portal before. I really liked it. Um, it was fairly easy to use. But everybody uses World Anvil now. And it sounds like World Anvil might have better capabilities uh, compared to what Obsidian Portal used to have. <laughs> What's so funny? Little some... known fact, 99% of interpersonal problems can be solved with a large axe for that. <laughs> <laughs> this axe is cool on this guy, too. Look at this axe. It's got like a face. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a face on there. Yeah, you can't tell in there, but there's a face on this axe, and uh, it's really, really awesome looking. I love it. So, anyway, so these guys are going to be uh, used as some of my demons in hell, I think. Uh, maybe the... Well, I'm not going to give away what, but yes. They're, I think, going to be used for that. That was very specific. They're just demons in hell. That's <laughs> as specific as it needs to be. Gosh, such a hater. So, um... Anyways, I've been following World Anvil, though, on Twitter, and I follow them on Facebook. I have friended some of the developers. I've seen other YouTubers cover some stuff before. Uh, some of the things I'm most looking forward to is the timeline aspect. Uh, I, it looks like you can create the timeline in the, pro, like in the website itself. Like with the, the looks of it and graphics of it and everything. And then click on things to expand on them. Uh, which seems really cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. There's... Uh, obviously if you import picture, like your maps, you can actually click on the map and zoom in to different areas. So like if I click a city, it could actually have a city map there. Um... Things like that. Or notes. I could have it like jump out to like a written blurb about the city. Uh, you can hyperlink in your articles to different things. Like say I have an article about like these heroes that did some great things uh, to save the city or whatever. And they're called like, I don't know, we'll just say the provokers or something. <laughs> and then you could click on the provokers and it would take you to like their their bios or whatever you want it to actually link to or you know, background information about what a provoker is or something. So this seems very, like, OneNote-esque. Sort of, but a lot more user-friendly and uh, not something you have to have on your computer necessarily. Right, but sort of like that style where, like, it's easy to insert, like... Yes. Tables and... But, like, OneNote is still... Charts. You're limited in how deep you can go because of the tabs, the way that works. This is like infinite levels of deepness. What do you mean? Because of the so like one note, you get the tabs on the left. You can indent them like up to three times. And then you get the tabs along the top. Right? So oh. under each tab at the top, you got the side tabs. Uh, no, mine just keeps going. Okay. I Anyways, I, so I use one note, but that's fine. Oh, um, okay. There's, there are limits, I guess, is my point. But gotcha. the, yeah. And, I mean, you can do whatever. You can create as many pages as you want. But the amount of indentations or whatever or subfolders is still limiting, I feel like, in OneNote. 
in my opinion. Because I've tried using have, OneNote. I must not have hit my limit. It's not, yeah, it's not. How deep do you go with yours? Uh, I don't know. I have like 15 tabs. So, and all my tabs have like 10 things. I don't know. So I'll just show you quickly what I mean. They won't see it, but you will. And that's okay. I'm opening it right now. Yeah, no, I'm just asking you, like, that's, yeah, it's very it seems similar. Very similar to that kind of style, right? Like sure. where you're putting for organization, yeah. Yeah, in where little you're putting buckets. like pages in there, and then you have subsections, and you can link and like, mm -hmm. hey, I inserted this picture, I inserted this table, Correct. graphic, whatever thing, you know. Right. That type of stuff. Oh, I forgot. So. Ooh. The other day I had an issue where I... Oh, shoot. My hair is like... Um, I just got out of the shower, so my hair's all wet and it's driving me nuts. Sorry. Continue. Continue <laughs> so on. the other day I got all upset because I thought my son deleted my Xbox ID. Oh, yeah. And uh, I wasn't mad at him. I was just frustrated. And last night I couldn't sleep, so I got up and figured out that it was a different website. Uh, or a different email associated with it somehow. Apparently they assigned me one when I uh, started Xbox. So I got an Outlook email for my Xbox, Xbox user ID. So, anyways. Uh, so Moral of the story is that he was able to recover it. Yes. All is well on the Xbox account. All right, so here, I'll show you real quick, Balls. This is my fantasy world stuff that's already in here, too. So you have all these tabs, right? So these are your primary tabs. Under each one, you have sub-tabs. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Under your sub-tabs, you can add pages. So say I add a page. Yeah. Yep. And then I can indent it. So making it a sub-page. Boom. You can uh... only do that so many times, though. So say I have a city, oh, okay. and I want to, like, list things out, but then I want to list out, like, you know what I mean? There are still only so many you can do for I... it just doesn't let you. Yeah, I got that. So that's all. So, But it's still, I mean, I can do everything I want in this, which I've basically done a lot of stuff in here already. Like, look at this. I got swamps, continents, forests, like, all sorts of things. My elevator pitch for campaigns. How magic works, locations. So, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna take. You're way better than I am. At yeah, that. monsters I've made up, magic items I've made up, gods and goddesses, factions, uh, which in this I only have three, four, five, six, seven of them, six of them so far, but I have more written down elsewhere. Custom feats for fifth edition. Roll tables I've been working on. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yep. And then look. That looks cool. I got more stuff. Stolen items. That you I have so many things. Guilds. Monster creation tables that I'm working on. Uh, and then notes. So like Draconic Ancestry. All sorts of other things. And then I was going to take some of these things and put them on my website under a mm -hmm. section called My Homebrew World. Oh, that'd be cool. I still might do that. Um, but you're thinking that the... World Anvil might work better. Might be a better, like, platform for yes. that type of stuff. Yes. Okay. And I don't know the limits of the free version. Mm, uh, okay. But I'm going to... That's all I plan on using for now. Um, unless I, you know, things are really getting crazy and I'm, like, you know, killing it with other things. Like, the new job I'm getting and stuff. That might change things down the line. But we'll see. Yeah. But right now, it's definitely not necessary. And I was telling you the uh, earlier today, there were like, I was going through Amazon, and there's like six hundred dollars worth of D and D stuff I want. <laughs> so it's a long ways away. There's actually more than that. That was just the stuff I really want that might be time sensitive because the prices will go up on those things. But that's okay. Mm, that's the bare minimum, you guys. Uh, yeah, that's the start. I mean, I probably want closer to, like, $2,000 worth of things right now, especially now that we played Star Wars, and I'm mildly interested in that. Yeah, that was super fun. It was. I'd play it again. I really would. So, uh, so Victor said, I am looking at World Anvil now. 
My campaigns are a collection of random thoughts across a few notebooks. So normally that's what happens to me. I make, I like to have a pad of paper for a campaign or I like to make folders. And really I like to have folders and the pad of paper. But um, the folders used to have, I'd have like all the settlements written out on like what I call a settlement sheet that I have. It's something I've modified uh, the Pathfinder settlement sheet from their dungeon dungeon master's guide, uh, dungeon mastery or whatever. Okay. And uh, I modified that sheet to put stuff that I would use. So it's got like different like hooks. It's got tavern uh, menu items. Uh, it's got like small, medium, and major hooks basically. Not small, but minor moderate and major hooks it's got a bounty board thing so like what would you see if you found a bounty board in town um some important npcs things like that um and so i put all that on this little sheet which you can find i think it's on my website at uh, rpgjuice.com and uh, if you go to downloads it should be under like gm aids or something or dungeon master aids or something like that but, um, so I have that over there and I like to do a bunch of those for all the si like different cities and establishments that my players will possibly do. And if I th think they're getting close to an area where there might be a new one, I start a whole new sheet. Um, I also do a list of NPC names by race and gender that oh. I keep in there. I haven't done this in my latest campaigns. So that's why I've kind of been not as good on my feet. But in oh, all the old I ones, I have right. folders for them. Um, and then I have... I tend to do an outline when I start a campaign. So you don't have bad guys named Siegfried and Roy? No. I didn't even do that on purpose. Well, Sorry, you, continue. You, <laughs> you just named him Roy. Your brother threw out the Siegfried part. <laughs> you should have given him a pet tiger. Uh, missed opportunity. Yup. Okay, continue on. Uh, so anyways, so that's what I've always done in the past. I've always had these sheets that keep me on my game. And, uh, you know, so I have an outline that I plan out my campaign. Like, what is happening in the background? What is the main thing? So, for example, say, hypothetically, say I was running a module. Say, like, Horde of the Dragon Queen. So the outline would literally be what's in that book, right? All the chapters and yada, yada, yada in order and how they have to, like, right. happen. That doesn't mean your players are going to do those things in order. However, things that are time sensitive will still happen if your players go or don't go. For example, say uh, Tiamat Rising and they decide not to go into that place because they're like, we're not high enough level. Well, you've done everything else in the campaign. So Tiamat's going to rise, like, no matter what. Like, you know what I mean? But He's now... coming for you. Yeah, but now I have complete freedom over how that unfolds because it's not going to happen the way it did in the module. You know what I mean? Now, I wouldn't run the module that way, but that's how I run my homebrew stuff because I'm more comfortable taking liberties um, in homebrew games. So... Gotcha. So that's how I've done my stuff in the past. And what I like to do as well is I like to incorporate, for example, we played uh, with your brother and his uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law and all of them. Well, I when that campaign ended, I incorporated their player characters into the setting. So even though we didn't play too far into it, I, in my head, finished the story. And then when I, I wanted to play a similar story in the same area, I fast-forwarded it in the timeline 80 years. And we played again, and the new players discovered the statues of those former heroes in the main city. Oh, um, okay. Do you remember that, when the you guys were heading back to try and stop the, the onslaught onto Stonehall Keep at all? Probably not. Um, I feel like a little bit. Because you were like, wait, that was my brother's character. And I was like, yeah. And then you see another statue. <laughs> like, there was um, the only characters that were still alive from that campaign were the elves. Because, you know, they lived so long. 
So I was, um, those were the only ones that did not have statues yet. Uh, one of them, uh, I had actually, uh, is an NPC in another area and he's changed his name. Nobody knows that, that like who he is or anything like that, but he's trying to keep it on the DL. Um, and that was Dustin's character, Thro what was it, Throw Salon or something like that? Yep. Yeah, so he was the only one that did not get a statue, I think. Because I, th I don't think you were a half a elf. I think you were something else. You were an Azamar, maybe? Mm, Possibly. Not. I don't remember. I'll have, I'd have to look at the notes. I still have that folder intact, though. Really? Yeah. Hey, let me grab it real quick. No, it's okay. I believe Oh, you. no, it's good. I like looking at this stuff. We're talking about world building. We're good. It's right over here. Alright, so this is my homebrew folder. It's like a one and a half inch binder ish. I keep notes from all sorts of stuff. I've got the map that Nate drew for our one game. I think the folder's in here. Uh oh, what if it's not? I may have taken stuff out. So, yeah. Okay, interesting. Oh, you know what? My uh, settlement sheets have my old logo on it. Do they really? Yep. Kind of funny. So here's, look at this. So this is how I used to do session prep. I used to type everything out into like a page or two, or a couple pages, depending on how far I got ahead, including leaving space for monster stuff so I could write it down. Oh, look how organized you I are. know. So you guys can see, this was my prep notes. Now you can't see it. But yeah, anyways. It's got to be in here. I swear I had it in here. Pathfinder Society stuff. Paula, Matt, Alex, Bree, Jordan, Kieran. Oh, maybe I didn't take that other stuff out yet. Mm. Paula, Nate, Dustin, Nicole. No, I did. Because that was the camp, the other campaign when we were on the side of the state before. So Nate was playing Malcolm Shale. You were playing Leah Nalo. Dustin was Velner Crux. Nicole was Kiana. And Steve was Smiles. We got up to level five in that campaign before we moved. And look, long forgotten God. <laughs> hey, uh, Victor, what do you think of World Anvil now that you're looking at it? Here's a look. Here's my random NPC names. Uh, human male, human female, elf male, goblin, which doesn't have male or female, orcs, dwarfs. That's pretty cool. Oh, so this is totally it. Yeah. Pine run, sandstrum. See, that's good stuff right there. Yeah. That's like pretty cool. Stuff. That's pretty good. I love looking at it. Here it is. Boom. Okay. Erica, Andrew, all your guys' characters. And guess what? We got to level five in that campaign as well. That seems like where we tend to end, it seems. Yeah. So it's here's my really outline. Common. Check this out. All the yellow stuff is all you finished. And I know I have more pages, why is only one showing? Jeez. I had cheat sheets I made for them so they wouldn't have to question what they could do on their turns. Look at that. So their spells, how to use them. I was trying really hard. Have a map that was drawn. Two maps. Jeez, oh, Pete's. DM's copy. Oh. I love it. This is exciting. I love looking at my old DM's notes and stuff. The Black Tunnels of Doom. Oh, yeah. Is that where you guys fought the intellect devourers? Do you remember that? It is. It's Drow... And intellect of ours. Do you remember that? Mm, a little bit. Yup. There were mind flayers. Do you remember that? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I had some resistances. And did you, right? guys, you guys, we ended the session. That was the last session. 
Because when you guys got out, you were barely alive, and you had seen dragons flying overhead, uh, attacking a castle up on the mountain. Yeah, that sounds about and that right. Was the, that was where we left off, and we never played again. Oh, because we moved. But yeah, so anyways, that's all this wonderful stuff in here. But yeah, I do a t uh, an outline that, for some reason, I'm missing the second page. But that's the outline I have. All the yellow is what they did. They only did about a third of what's on my outline for the main story. And uh, basically, it was like a save the world kind of thing, because the world's going to end type of campaign. And then, yeah, I have like a special note on here. Make sure to tie this to a player's backstory. Uh, the final dungeon on this page should be a mega dungeon. Should take various sessions to finish. <laughs> uh, another note, tie this to a player's backstory. Tie this to the human fighter's backstory. Tie this to one of the players. So there's a lot of things I wrote in there. I like how I uh, did those outlines. I plan on doing an outline for my, my game that starts Saturday. Um, but I gotta figure out what we're gonna do in that campaign. I'm not 100% sure yet. Yeah, so. you seemed like you were really unsure quite how you wanted it to go. And well, I, th I got an idea now. I, I So I know enough. Um, oh, okay. I've started piecing together in my head what I'm going to steal from modules so far and where it's going to be. Just okay. Like, boom. So I know what I want to start with. Um, I know what I want to segue into. And in between there, there's I think there's going to be some of my own stuff that I'm just going to make happen. And, uh, you know, some, you know, kind of go along with, with that. Um, I think this, will that look dumb if that's red? Right here. Um. Well, I don't know. You got like neon orange. The orange is gonna get covered a little bit, just not yet. Like that's a the base for the skin tone. I'm gonna change it. I also thought about maybe even peppering in a, like a wash of red in the orange before I try to lighten it up. Mm, I, okay. I don't know what I, I'm trying to make him look like a demon. I don't know. I think red would be fine then. On this part? Yeah. Okay. I think it'll probably be okay. Okay. That's what I was hoping. Uh, so, okay. So he said, I like to draw rough flow charts for the night's playing. Yeah. I So I type out stuff um, like in paragraph format. Like I'll do a paragraph for like a scene and I set some scenes. And if the players don't go there, they don't go there. Right? Like, I don't force that um, at all. But, like, I'll have an idea that, okay, if they leave town, this is most likely what's going to happen. Like, they're going to come across this traveling merchant. And how's that scene going to look? And how's that going to play out? And then I try, I like to uh, do the same thing with, like, encounters. Like, um, I, I know I want them to fight, you know, this thing. So then I'll put this thing almost not necessarily in their way. Like if they're trying to avoid the thing cause they've gotten information, that's not a problem. But if they never got the information and I was planning this encounter, most likely that encounter is happening, whether they go East, West, North or South, you know? Um, but it just depends. Um, it still has to make sense. Like, if they're, the forest is to the east, but the beach is to the west, I'm not going to throw a forest encounter in the west, you know. Um, but yeah. Uh, he said, I'm liking it so far. Once your chat is done, I will look into it more, more in depth. Yeah, I think Thursday I'm going to really dig into it, or maybe even tomorrow during the day. Oh, and spend some time. Just looking at it, yeah. I'm not going to... Deciding... I mean, I'm going to start using it and seeing if I like it. If I don't like it, I'll just abandon it. But I think I'm going to like it. And I've got a pretty good idea. I've seen enough, I think, to know that I'm going to like that tool. And being able to access it from anywhere is kind of nice. 
Yeah, so I kind of do something similar to what you are saying that you do. Really? And that is, like, when I'm um, prepping, I go through and I write a couple sentences to set sort of, like, every scene. Yep. And that's really the extent of what I do. I know monsters, you know, of course. Right. Um, And I'll reference... Like, I'm surprised because oh, we've what? never talked how we prep. Yeah, like, oh, what and book are they located? <laughs> well, so am I. Yeah. Nobody I got you. taught me how to prep anything. Um, anyway, I'll note, like, where the monster information is located, like what page they're on in the monster manual or something like that. Or if it's right. module specific, I'll note the page number that the, their information kind of falls on or something like that. Right. So I can easily reference the information. Mm-hmm. And that, that's actually really about all. That's that's most of what I you know. You. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, I just think that's interesting because, um, you know, whether you're self-taught or not, that's not. I I just didn't know that was how you prepped. Yeah. That's all. I've never talked about it with you. I the extent of it was always. I always thought you typed up a lot more than I ever did. Because like the the writing part is the easy part for me. I'm just like boop. No, a lot of what I'll type up are notes, especially on a module where it's like, oh, this, oh, you know, weird condition or, or whatever, you know, it'll, it'll take like four paragraphs in a module to explain exactly what's going to happen when something, you know, oh, they didn't make this check. So here's 10 pages worth of stuff about how it's going to, you think it's that bad? how it affects them. Sometimes, sometimes I just think it's a little wordy. Like, Hmm. so I just need a summary, you know? I suppose. So I make a summary. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't, when it's a module, I don't do any of that. I read it, try to understand it, and that's it. I don't write a lot of stuff. I'll write monster stats, that's it. When I run a module. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't feel the need to write things down when it's already in writing. For me. It helps me. The thing that sucks is flipping back and forth in a module. Especially if they're in like a dungeon and the map's like four pages before. Yes, which is why it's nice if you do re-summarize everything. But then you don't have to do that. I open the map in a separate tab when I use D&D Beyond. That's what's nice about Descent to Avernus. So I'll open the map separate. And all the monster stat blocks separate. There's a new tab. And then I just read the text of the room you're in. But sometimes things you guys are doing kind of affects other rooms. So then I'm like, oh crap, I gotta read that other room real quick. Crap, I Before I make a determination. Things going on. Okay, yep, the guys in the other room are coming after you now. Because you guys are loud and arguing about some accommodations. <laughs> I swear. Luke's going to just continue <laughs> to get us killed over and over again. That's like his role. I hope all his characters are chaotic. Because that's certainly how he plays 100% of his characters. Maybe. You know? So Victor says, I take pictures of my notes and then upload them to Google Drive. The last few years, Heroes Unlimited is what I have been. Yeah, here, so I struggle with modern games because you can travel so quickly over such great distances, Um, whether it's car or flying. I really struggle. And, like, the scope of a metropolis, for me, sometimes can be overwhelming. Um, So I, I have a hard time running some Heroes games, to be honest. Uh, Yeah. Just because you're like you're worried, like there's too much, there's too much feel... detail, there's too much stuff. Yeah, I, it's the I never feel like big. I can be fully. Uh, it's too small. Like no matter what size it is, it's too small because the amount of ground they can cover. You know what I mean? 
Um, but I've always struggled with that, and I never feel prepared for a Heroes game. Uh, the only way that I can is if I, if it is more railroaded, because I tried to do the not railroad thing with you guys when we were playing it before, and then nothing got done. Like, nobody knew what to do, my hooks weren't strong, nobody was taking any initiative to fig- find anything out. Well, I think it was hard, too, because you had me and you had two inexperienced players, and I don't play futuristic sure. games, so it's, it's harder for me to think, like... I'm a oh, hero, what would I be like, doing to try and save the world? I think that camera's frozen. It froze again. That's what happens um, when you use this crappy camera. Um, yeah, I mean, so they were, they're experienced with role-playing, like, they were, they used to use MySpace to role-play, that's how they met each other. Yeah, but So not... it's not that role-playing for them was out, that's the thing, I can understand if the mechanics were difficult or whatever, but, like, the role-playing aspect for them... Yeah, but text-based role-playing, and, you know... Right, you have a lot of time sometimes. Yeah, you, you can write through. something and rewrite it 800 times, and it'll be fine. Right. Right? Yeah. You know, so... Yeah? I don't know. I just thought a red sword would be cool for um, these guys. I'm pretty sure you made fun of me for making a colored sword recently. No, I didn't. I would I'm never do sure. that. You did. No. 100%. You're full of it. You are Look at so that. 30% full. reporting. I said we're not talking about that. I didn't. I not am. Not talking about it. There's nothing wrong with keeping up to date on politics. That's not all. on my stream. I'm just staying up to date. I'm not commenting about it. I'm just saying that I'm keeping up to date with 31% of precincts reporting. It's important to have an understanding of who potential presidential candidates could be, regardless of what side you're on. All done. So anyways. It's important. I did not make fun of any sword paintings. You did. Which one? What colored sword have you done in the last two years? Remember it was like an axe, and you were like, what happened? No. I don't remember. It's just like last week. No, it wasn't. You're talking about the gold trim on the mall? Is that what you're talking about? Maybe. That had nothing to do with colors. That had everything to do with you not understanding what we were talking about. Me and other people when we said that the trim or accents should be gold. That's all that was. So she painted the whole, like, head, or most of the head of the mall gold. Like, even the part that makes contact. And we're like, no, that's not what we were talking about. And she was like, oh, well, I didn't know. But I wasn't making fun says, of her. You, well, I just you said, said specifically, that that you said it doesn't make any sense for the part of the weapon that's going to come in contact with somebody to be colored. No, to be gold. Gold is a soft metal. Right? Compared to solid steel. <laughs> That's all. Well, we went from five people to one person. That was... Oh, now we're to three. I think our stream sometimes flutters out. I think that's what's going on. Because it did that the other day, too. Where it went from... Like six to zero in no time. Right. We're questionable. We get boring at points. People mm-hmm. are just like, screw this. I don't know about These that. These people are weird. So I'm most excited. I There's a lot of things about World Anvil that excite me. Okay. I, like I said, it's the, the timeline thing. The keeping organized. Yeah, because organization, I know you might find this hard to believe, is very important to me when it comes to role playing. Very important, especially as a DM. I am always trying to find better ways to be organized to make things quicker and more efficient. Um, it's It drives me nuts. Sometimes it keeps me up at night. and that, That's not a joke. That's 100% legit. Um, like, I, if I find something from, like, 
John Four's Role Playing Tips, or now there's like two other newsletters like that that I'm subscribed to as well. If I find something that I think is going to help me do things better, like more efficiently, I am all over it. And organization is a huge part of that. I love binders uh, when it comes to campaign prep or just keeping my notes in order. I love, you know, I loved Obsidian Portal, except Obsidian Portal for me was a lot of work. I'm hoping World Anvil. I know it's going to still be a lot of work to set it up. Uh, I just don't know how much, but I'm hoping it's a little bit more intuitive and quicker. Um, Because it looks really cool from what I've seen. And I don't know how much of that is just people doing their own graphics, though, either. Or if it has some of that built into it. But I'm hoping it has, like, some of the timeline features and stuff built into it. So Victor agrees that um, running modern games is really difficult. But yes. he, it sounds like he's been doing this forever, 1990s. Yeah, I got into he Heroes said. Unlimited in 97, but I didn't run it until 2010. In fact, I, I don't, eh, that's not true. I ran online games in a chat room uh, before then, and I tried a play-by-post game on a forum at one time. Um I hate play-by-post games, though, or play-by-email. Anything that's just slow is not for me because I'll lose interest, especially as other players are slow to do their part. It then kills my momentum. Oh, to kind of come in and... Yep. It, it becomes a chore, I think, sometimes. So that bothers me. There we go. Makes it difficult for you. Yup. So... Let's see. I feel like I'm going to wrap this guy up soon. He's not going to be a player character, is he? Uh, he could be. Much. He could end up being like someone's warlock. Oh. He could be like a necromancer wizard, which does not mean he's evil. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, Should we make let these me swords think. red, too? I also don't know what I'm going to do after him. Nah. Well, okay. maybe. Maybe just this semi Well, I'm going to go through and highlight his robe. He's not going to be robe. just a general, like, like a goblin, probably. I will probably use him a lot as a cultist, though. So this... He'll get a lot of use. Is what he looks like right now. Remember, ah, you guys set I'm him trying. in the palm. Trying. Trying. Hold on. Hold, please. There you go. Technical difficulties. Beautiful, beautiful. See, still not working. You gotta go closer again and then back it up. There you go. Now back mm. it up. There you go. It's kind of what he looks like right now. He's looks a little awesome. messy. He looks awesome. He needs to be cleaned up. Sure. He needs highlights. I think he looks pretty cool. You know, it's gonna work out. I like it. I dig it. Um, I agree that it's hard to run modern. Once that I have been doing is setting the game back in the 90s. Plot device that I use is a shadow senator. He or she is the government contact. Yes. Uh, so I have a rifter that has a game that I always wanted to run. It's in the future, though. But for the most part, it makes it pretty easy like to run that campaign for superheroes. It's like uh, Super's Registration Act, I think. Uh, it's a two-part rifter, and uh, it's heavily based on politics. Uh, it's actually really good, though. There we go. That's all we'll do for him. Cool. Cool. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Yes, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, my the best note taking I've done for a lot of my homebrew stuff is in OneNote though. OneNote has been pretty useful. I do have to admit that. I mean, that's what I use at work a lot. <laughs> it looks amazing. Is that long scroll his shopping list? <laughs> 
Um, yes. So that's the list of his spell components. That's his murder list. <laughs> he's getting ready to go to Target. Oh, speaking of and which, he's there's self-aware. There's, there's so. a, a video I want to watch. It's on Instagram. It's like Men of Target. No, oh, my sister posted that. Did she? I want to yep. watch it. It looks like they're tailgating at Target. <laughs> uh, it looks hilarious. So I need to watch that. Yeah. Janelle posted it. Well, that's nice to know because now I could just go to her page rather than try to find it on Instagram again. I've seen multiple people share it on Instagram and I'm like, oh, I want to watch that. I'm sure it's hilarious. It looks hilarious from like the 10 seconds I saw. But yeah. So anyways. The, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, something about D&D that was, you know, so insightful and... No, probably not. Why are you going to hate on me? I'm not. I'm telling you that uh-huh. you're insightful. Yeah, but there's totally sarcasm in that. A lot of sarcasm. That A would never be me. of sarcasm. Not me. Yeah, okay. I would never do that. Whatever. Today, a oh, coworker I, told me, they said, Paula, I don't think I've ever heard you say the words, it's fine, without being sarcastic. Oh, that's not a good thing, though. So, Anyways, I remember what I was going to say. Oh. So, in some of these streams coming up, there is a high probability I will be doing some terrain crafting while Paula paints minis. Um, so there's I, some guy locally was selling a boat that he made using some XPS foam and stuff. And he's selling it for 300 bucks. Now I have no desire to sell it. If I made a boat that looked as cool as his, that would be mine forever. <laughs> like it, it looks amazing. So uh, I plan on trying to do that because I, one of the reasons I don't want to run a salt marsh campaign is I would love, I feel like I want to own a couple boat boats for my miniatures before I do that. Oh, in order to, to like, have like properly run it or something? Yeah, to make it really awesome. Like, there, it just isn't as awesome if you just draw it on a map. Oh, this is our boat. You know what I mean? But having that prop to play on would just be, like, so much cooler. Don't you agree? I mean, I agree, yes. It would be pretty amazing. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that. So that's what I need to do before I ever do that. (laughs) That's your goal. Yes. That's my life goal. I need to make a boat that looks epic before I run any seafaring campaigns. It doesn't mean I won't use, like, you know, makeshift boats for one-offs here and there. But to do a full-on campaign, there's some things I need. One, a Kraken. Two, a couple boats that look cool. And that's it. That's my criteria. There's just it, It's just a two-item list. <laughs> well, no, I need more than one boat. Because what if you fight some, like, pirates? Hmm. Then you got to, like, get into, oh, well... This guy's up on the, uh, whatever it's called, the eagle view thing. and Crow's nest? Yes, crow's nest. There we go. Thank you. The eagle view thing. I couldn't Mm. remember what it was called, okay? Such specific. First of all, I suck with terminology of ships. So, as evidenced by Matt calling me out on that in our one game, which is only more reason I don't want to... uh, ever run something like that without an actual prop because then I don't need to know what the hell it's called. <laughs> I can just say, he moves over here and everyone can see where he moves and that's fine. <laughs> you can label areas ahead of time. That too. can etch it in there and be like, this is for you guys who don't know anything about boats. I'm trying to help you. I know everything. I know everything as the person who labeled the boat. 
No, that that bothered me when he did when he would do that, and then acted like I was dumb for not knowing. It's like I don't freaking know. How am I supposed to know? Jeez. Yeah, I don't remember what you're talking about. He was like wanting to design their boat, and I said, "Go for it." And then he's like asking me questions using the terminology of the boats, and I'm like, "Uh, sure. I don't understand most of that stuff." He's like, "What do you mean you don't know what the whatever is?" And I'm like, "Uh, why would I know? <laughs> I don't own a boat." I've never owned a boat. Not into pirate culture. <laughs> like, I don't know. Not into <laughs> Hell, pirate Hell, I didn't know what the little front skirt thing was on these guys' armor, and I forgot already what it is. Yeah, I say, um, I already forgot, so. <laughs> but no. Dwayne helped us with that one. Yes, but now Dwayne's not here to help us with it again. Right. And there's obviously a problem. Yup. Sorry, Dwayne. Well, he's not here to be sorry to. We were trying. Were we, though? I tried to remember. Did you try? It's not my forte. Remembering? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say why. <laughs> she may have been dropped in her head once or twice. That's... <laughs> not really. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just joking. Yeah, yeah. So what's so world building? Do you like to world build? Because you did the Thacos thing, but I don't know how much detail you put into that for world building. Um. So I'm willing to design small areas i don't usually do a whole entire world i do well, as yeah, i you go start small as you go yeah right like that's out more of common necessity you know so they want to be from a different like oh i want to be from a forested region okay so name it i'll find a place to put it right you know that type of thing um yeah, I don't think I do it to the extent that you do. I do draw out a world map ahead of time. So I have kind of a general idea of what I want oh, so the world map. to look like. You map first. So, yeah, that's what I'll do. Interesting. And then, I do not map really at all, usually. Yeah, I'll... I have of my world. My world is mapped out. It was because I got... I was trying to play around in Photoshop a few years back, and so I came up with my general land masses at least, and then started peppering things in there. Yeah, no, I'll actually do that kind of at the beginning. And then sometimes that inspires me to, you know, oh, hey, these guys over here would, you know. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know you started with the map. Why not? I don't know. I just didn't know that's how you started. I know a lot of people do. I just didn't know you did. That's all. Yeah, because then you know where everything is located. Right off the bat. Because, like, for example, with the Thacos thing, I never saw your map. Well, that was an island. Right. So it was just one island. No, that it was, was a couple a islands. We had to... Travel somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't like an entire world. That was just like a few no, islands. No, no, I understand that. Most people don't build their whole world to start a campaign. Yeah. Most people do what you do. They start small with an area, and that's about it, and then work from there. But I still never saw your map. Yeah, no, it was just a really small area. So, oh, okay. you know. Sure. How much do you need to do, right? Yeah, I don't know. I want If you have a map, though, I want it. Because then we, we decided to put that into my world. Oh, I don't know that I still have it. Well, that's no good. No good. <laughs> I have a problem with creating NPCs for world building. Like background stories for NPCs or how to incorporate them. I don't see the problem here. Or <laughs> like elaborate a little bit more. Maybe we can help you. I have a problem with my NPCs not just being flat. Really? Yeah, mine are always pretty flat. They don't have a lot of 
Yeah, well, you role play them all the same, too. You only have, like, two or three go-tos. So there's tricks that people do, like... It's uh, because I haven't developed them ahead of time because I don't think you're sure. going to, you know... Sure. Torture. Well, I get that. But this guy or whatever for that. information. So I don't plan out anything different. I got that. So I get that. So, but some people, like... Will just have a mannerism, like oh, it, they are fidgety, or like rather than changing their voice and maybe even how they role play, they just they do something with their face or they do something with their hands or you know what I mean. Or sometimes people will just grab a prop, mm. like a book or whatever, and it, when you're talking to this character, they always have this prop in their hand. Or when they're talking to this character, the character's always. Uh, looking behind themselves, like like watching their back, or you know what I mean. Just all over the place. It just depends. But that's like those are tips for people who don't who aren't comfortable like trying voices or influx or tones in their voice. You know what I mean, things like that. But to mix it with those things makes it even better. I'm not saying I'm good at. You're just saying that. This That's is what, what I've seen other people Backgrounds, recommend. names. Most of the NPCs are created on the fly. Victor, I get you. Yeah, I think most people do that. Though. I understand what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. The names are the worst part because you're trying to create something original. Oh, what's his name? What did he say his name was? Uh, well, now that you ask, it's Roy with an R-O-I. Yeah, that was terrible. It's fine. He's the soul monger. He's the soul monger. He is the soul monger. He is the magic item you've been looking for. <laughs> he is. That's funny. That would have been funny. Um, but I totally get you right because or Victor, because I do the same thing where it's like I want them to have original names and you know cool things about them but when it comes down to it just all so you got to do what I do you got to make a list of names that's probably a good decision it probably would be a good decision it's fairly simple I mean, you just go to one of those name generators, you press the button, you take the ones you like, you ignore the ones you hate, write them down, and do it another few times until you've got a name, like a list of like 20 names. Do it by race and sex, like I do. And now when you say it's a human woman and they go, oh, what's her name? You just go, this one. (laughs) You could do the same thing with like mannerisms too. Like, or uh, identifying traits, like hair color, eye color, deformities, scars, facial hair, whatever. Could be a good call. Maybe yeah. I'll try it. It's a Maybe little I'll bit of work up front, it but it makes things smoother. Yeah? Yeah, I think it does. I, I need to do it more with the traits and stuff. But yeah. I am not hating those guys. I actually kind of like them. Yeah? I do. Mm. 40% recording. Can you plug my phone in? Please? I'm not at 100% though. You're going to survive. You're going to make it. Don't you have your Fitbit on? Yeah. Oh, do you need your phone on for your Fitbit to get the messages? Or? What do you mean? That only works for text messages. What are you talking oh, about? I don't know. I don't know anything about your the way your Fitbit works. I will try that. Oh, the, the list idea? Yeah, it'll help. I'm telling you. I also, so I cheat now because I have some dice that help. I have player race, class, and alignment dice. And uh, so I roll those sometimes when someone's asking me. And then I use that to inspire what they look like or act like. Um, so I've done that too. Like, oh, it's a dwarf warlock. Okay, so it's a dwarf. He's got a pendant around his neck. Looks like a tentacly thing. And, uh, but
but it's like a big blob of tentacles. And uh, he's wearing dark robes. Uh, he seems kind of brooding and mysterious. There you go. That's what I would do if I rolled a dwarf warlock. Brooding and mysterious is a... Uh, That's a good descriptor. Uh, uh, appearance? Yeah. Don't you think so? I think that'd be a great descriptor. It would get my interest. All right, so this guy's pretty cool. Yeah, we need new brushes. You guys sell them at work, right? Are you able to get them for pretty cheap there? Like good ones? Um, I would have to look because I think I'd have to buy like 12 so, of them. That's worth it. We'll use them. With how often we've been painting, we will use them. Yeah, recently we've been painting more. It's awesome. But it's relaxing. I also might want to see them in person before I make a decision about... Well, aren't you able to at your work? What size? No, not anymore. What? How are you not able to see something? I mean, I can see a picture. What about your outlet? You can see a picture online.
That yeah, worked. That works. All right. Have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? Because <laughs> apparently that works. That was weird, though. That is the ultimate. I like that is fix. I, yeah, I can't stand some of this technology stuff. How it does that. I get really annoyed when things don't work how they're supposed to. I mean... Like, really annoyed. That happens to me constantly at work. So... What? Things not working the way they're supposed to? Yeah. Yeah? Like what? Like your computer? Yeah, but you're doing programming stuff. Isn't that usually, like, user error, or is that... Uh, sometimes it's user error. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, yes, it's user error. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, ah, get some more gray. So, and this brush may end up being donated to the kids soon. Because, you know, I've ruined it and all. Well. May end up becoming one of the kids' paintbrushes. Which is fine. It'd be a perfect brush for them to learn on. Right? Yeah, we just... Don't do a lot of painting with the kids. I know. But but they want to. All the time. Mommy, Daddy, can I paint miniatures? Yeah, how about no? <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Not yet. It's hard because it's like you want to, but you also don't want to. Oh, I want do to. want to. I want them to be able to paint miniatures. I want them to learn and get good at it and enjoy it. Think about it. Like, when they get older, wouldn't this be cool to sit down like the five of us and paint miniatures? Like, at the table or something? I think that would be a lot of fun. And then, the next night, play D&D &D all day long just because we can. And then? Do it again the next day. <laughs> Watch our kids end up like hating RPGs or something. No, they won't. There's no way. I would be shocked. Absolutely shocked. Like, everybody I know who says their kids don't like it, one of their, like, the wife doesn't like it or the husband doesn't like it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, in my mind, it makes more sense that the kids wouldn't like it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, because Because the other parent also doesn't like it? Yeah, but see, since we're both super cool... Yes. Yep. I, like, eventually they're going to go to conventions. Like, it's going to be, like, ingrained in them. Like, the reason I think I like RPGs and stuff is because of the games I used to play with my aunt growing up. You know? And, like, we play some games with the kids. We're starting to do it a little more. We've take, We've slowed down the last couple weeks. But we'll get back to it. Lily likes the idea. We need, I need to get her playing D&D &D again. Because she really wants to. Oh, well, maybe I'll work on her character next. There you go. But yeah. So, I don't know. It'd be cool to get her really into it. Although she's not into those books. She switched over to the uh, detective books or whatever. The detective books? I don't know. She said she likes detective books. She does like mysteries. Yeah. So, I don't know. You know, but... I was kind of bummed because I was like, oh, she's... Because when she first got them, she was excited. And then she read a little bit and was excited. And then, like, wah, wah, fell off real quick. I was like, oh, sad. Because I was hoping that that would be something right off the bat. She just, her obsession would begin. You know? Like, ooh. I like this. I want more D&D &D stuff. You know? 
she likes a lot of books with socialization. Correct. So, I think it's fine. It is fine. I'm not... It's normal. I'm not saying it's not. I just had hopes. That's all. Um... Other streams I watch have that happen as well. Oh, okay, cool. I don't feel as bad. It's not just us. Yeah. Uh, he said he'll be right back. His dogs are crying for a walk. Our dog doesn't do that. Yeah. Our dog just sleeps. Pretty much. Pretty much that's how it goes. Yup. Got four people watching at the moment. Oh, that's Okay. So, I think this guy is going to be done in a second. That's what you said. Did you paint the base yet? Paint the base. Just paint the base. Just do what I did. I made them gray. Like It's fine. You don't have to get crazy with the bases. As long as it's painted, it can be used and you could flock it later. You know? And then it at least has a finished appearance. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Right? Okay. And then if you never come back to it, like most of the miniatures, then we're good. There we go. For now, that'll do. Oops. I mean, I feel like I'm making progress. I'm I'm happy. I'm painting the bottom gray. Cool. Then I'll do his eyes, and then I might, I might, I'm thinking about it, try and do something with the words. What's he look like? Scroll. Well, right now I'm painting the base. Right. So hold on a second. Or did somebody else ask? No, I asked. Oh, okay. Yeah, then you can wait. Whatever. So I thought about cutting off these scraggler bristles. On my brush. I mean, you can do what you want. I don't know if that'll help you, though. It will. They When I was painting on the brown strap over here, the scragglers touched his orange skin and put brown on it. I was like, damn it. It's okay. It is okay. You'll survive. As long as I know how to love. No. No takers. Nope. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Interesting. Chat rate. Four concurrent viewers. Average watch time is eight minutes. They're super interesting. I just was like, oh, I can look at the analytics for a second. Yeah, look, chat rate. Every couple minutes, someone says something. Playbacks. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to get something for his eyes. Okay. And then we'll see about these words. I'm not sure. It's a little risky. Mm -hmm. It's like super risky. Yeah. It's most likely I'm going to screw it up. If you say so. I wouldn't screw it up if I were you. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it if I were you. I'm glad you specified. What are you doing with the words? I'm trying to make them look a little bit more like, you know... Magical. Gotcha. Magical. Yeah, I don't know how you make the words look more magical, though. Um, I don't know. I'm not covering his nose with black like I just did. <laughs> So, world building. What is your favorite part? Shit. I messed it up. 
It must have felt bad. Oh, I don't know. It's okay. Is it okay, though? It's not. It's no. going to be okay. Is it? No. Yeah, it'll be fine. So what's your favorite part of world building? All that means is setting building. It doesn't mean you build a whole world. What's your favorite part? Mapping? Mm. Yeah, probably. That's the most Honestly, fun Honestly, I don't super love fleshing out worlds and areas. So why do you like it's... running a game as a DM? What is it about being a DM that's fun for you? Um. Control? Yeah, because I know the story. Yeah, but you don't like coming like... up with the story. No, I like coming up with the story. It's just like a lot of times, you know, as a player, you don't see the whole story, right? Right, because we're not the ones doing the world building. <laughs> we're not the ones writing the lore. That's the DM doing that. So do you do a pre, like you come up with a story ahead of time and that's it? Like this is your story? Is that how you do it? And that's what's going to happen over the next no, three usually, years of a campaign? Or? Nope, not at all. Oh, okay. Not in the least bit. Gotcha, because you said story. Story signifies like the whole thing kind of, you know what I mean? For the most part. That was like the fastest they even finished. Oh, the dogs? Is it cold where you're at? We're in Michigan. So I think today it was like 30 degrees or something. I don't even know. Yeah, it was 30-ish. It's been 20 the last few days. Okay. Is he good? So... You saved him? He looks fine-ish. He looks cool from here. You always say that, though. You always trash what you've done. Always. You never say good things about anything you paint. And then everyone else is like, it looks so good. And you're like, eh. And they're like, no, it's awesome. Minus the blue hair on your nose. <laughs> World build for me, creating a place that allows us to explore new ideas. Sharing my idea of setting. Yeah, I like, obviously, you got to leave some blank, some empty areas. Right? You can't just put everything in there. You gotta, like, leave it flexible for the players to wreck it and do things and come up with things. And destroy everything. Basically. Burn it all down. I've been pretty lucky not to have a lot Shut of characters do that kind of stuff, though. Seems like that only happened at uh, when I ran Adventures League. <laughs> like, they purposely wanted to live out the... Uh, the murder hobo tropes. Which sucks, because that's like, the, the whole idea of that is to bring new people to the game. That's what Adventures League is really about. So if they're being disruptive, they can really ruin an experience for a new player. You know, like, oh, this is what D&D is all about. Burning the city down and doing all these terrible things. Okay. Yeah, maybe this game is not for me. That's my experience with running Adventures League. Um, it was basically like babysitting or like herding cats. It was very difficult. Herding cats? Yep. Herding I'm in Ohio. Me. It is high 30s right now. Are you an Ohio State Buckeye fan? This is a very important question. Don't answer. Just yes. The don't answer. He probably doesn't like sports. Most of my RPG friends don't. There's only a few who do. Surprisingly, there is a... Why are you going to judge him? I'm not judging him. There's a lot of mm -hmm. Ohio State fans, though, that are RPG people, actually. From my experiences. I bet the answer is yes. <laughs> I bet he's going to be like, yep. Now that you've stereotyped... O-H-I-O... What I do? Got to stereotype the Ohio State Buckeye people. So what I'm trying to do is make it look like these 
letters have like a green glow. To he said, them. "No way." <laughs> All right, you're good in my book. See, he knows what Ohio State Buckeye fans are like. That's why he said, "No way." That's great. That makes me happy. Made my night. MSU's having a hard time with that whole coach situation. Yeah, did you hear what happened? That's what I've heard. No. So, D'Antonio wanted to coach one more year, and then he wanted to step away and pick the person who was going to replace him. He wanted to be part of that process. Uh, Michigan State had already hired a firm to help with the hiring process of their next football coach. So when he found that out, he was mad that they went against his wishes and announced his resignation immediately. That's what happened. He felt slighted. Isn't that stupid? Yeah. It's very petty. Very petty. Like, ride it out for your last year, and you still might get to be part of the process. Like, there's nothing saying that you weren't going to be part of the process. It's taking forever. I'll just look cool enough to make it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting, though. That is kind of petty, though. Like, mm-hmm. I'm actually you know. not that surprised coming from him, especially the last couple of years. He seemed very arrogant. Like, everything he hated about Michigan, he's kind of just came across as very arrogant like Michigan. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to me. Like, he is everything he hates <laughs> in his rival. The irony. Right? Like, it's, it's hypocritical. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't see it that way, though. Of course not. But that's okay. So, in other words, he screwed over all those kids he recruited. All over some BS. Whatever. That's college sports for you. His pride was hurt. Mm hmm. Men and their pride. Or whatever. Women have pride too. Women do some similar stuff. Mm hmm. They do. Okay. I block plenty of them on Twitter for that. true for me it's the hypocrisy when people are hypocrites that's when i, I uh, that's where you draw the line yeah it bothers me and i'm sure i've got things where i'm kind of hypocritical as well oh, i'm sure everybody does like Girls, okay, so here's one that I typically agree with women on. When they get mad about being objectified, right? I I can agree with that, right? Oh, you're being objectified. That's not right. But then when they go and do the same thing, like share skinny, scrawny dudes and with facial hair and talk about how sexy they are on their public posts. It's like, but you were just mad that, like... The Super Bowl ad or whatever was objectifying women. And now you're sharing, like, Adam Levine talking about how sexy he is without his shirt on or something. You know what I mean? Like, that seems silly to me. I get that. And besides, we all know Adam Levine is too small to be sexy. Not enough curves. <laughs> uh, what size of party do you like to run? My limit is three to five players. That way everyone can RP. 
How long do you run at one time? Three hours till five hours for me. That's a great question. So I like uh, smaller groups like that as well. I think three or four is perfect. Five is good too because then you, your group can do a little more, uh, especially if you're talking about like D&D or whatever. Um, you know, you can throw tougher monsters, things like that. For a hero's game, uh, because like it's so unbalanced as it is, and I don't try to balance it, uh, I don't like restrict powers or stuff. I think three is good, and then I just try to adapt to what my players are. Um, but yeah, D and D, four is perfect. Five is still good um, for me. Now, time. If I'm running an online game, I prefer two hour games. Uh, sitting in front of the computer for two hours running a game is my ideal amount. If things are going really well, three is good, maybe four, but four, four can really start to drag, especially if like anyone's having an off night, because um, online games are just a different beast for me. Uh, in person, I really think four hours is good uh, with a break in the middle, like a 20 minute break in the middle. Uh, and when they show up, I like to socialize a little bit before jumping in, and then I like to assume that there's going to be a little bit of socialization afterwards. Because um, to me, like gaming in person is just more of a social event than uh, just playing the game, usually. Unfortunately, time doesn't always allow that, but yeah. What about you? Um. So I would say... That I mostly agree with everything you said. Um, but. With the exception that I would prefer to have four players. Can you hand me the light? Sometimes when you get down to three, it makes it a little bit more difficult on the players to be able to play just whatever they want without having issues in your party. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like not having a cleric or not having a wizard or something like that. So I feel yeah, like that doesn't matter. You get no. a little bit bigger. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, but I think that anything past six is too much. Because yeah, then for me, anything it, past five is. Way it too just much. goes. It goes too long. But I really, I like four is like optimal number. Yes. I think that's the like perfect amount of players. And time. Do you prefer to... all the bases covered, like the the core four, like the healer, the utility, the frontline fighter, and the spellcaster, for example? No. Okay. What is your you ideal makeup of a group? Oh, I don't. I, I don't care. You don't care. It so you just mentioned I... the healer, for example. Yeah. So. So what if they don't have a healer? It, so it doesn't bother me, but I find that it bothers parties. Okay. You know, like, they have issues with, oh, I don't know what type of character to play type of thing because we need to fill this gap. And then they don't play that. the character that they want to play yeah, because you know they're I trying dislike to that. fill a, like, a, a gap in there or something like that. Yep. And so then they're just not as into their character. Um, I feel like three hours is a great amount of time. If you're going to do a bigger break in there, like, if you want to, like, have lunch or have dinner or something like that and then go back to playing, then I can do longer sessions. Yes. I don't prefer to run sessions that are over three hours, though. Right. That's, like, I'll play long sessions, but I don't want to run it. Right. So, so I think this guy's done. Oh, he is badass. That is so cool. You need to seal that. So, what is what this guy looks like? I think it looks great. I think my skin tone came out okay on this guy. It's kind of what he looks like. Got his words there are kind of green. I don't know if you can really tell or not. You can in Maybe person. Maybe you can a little bit. But they sparkle. So oh, I can't tell that. That's perfect. Sparkle is great. Sparkles are wonderful. 
The back of him's pretty boring. He's not that exciting there. He's got this cool skull thing going on right here. This little, what is this little like potion pot That's thing what it looks down like. here? It could be his so, flail. So, he's probably done. He looks pretty good. You know, I don't know. I think it looks great. It's looking, looking fine. So, yeah, he does look kind of cool, doesn't he? I yeah, see, so. look at they sparkle. I'm gonna sparkle. use him Saturday. I like him that much. He will get used. He will make characters, and that guy will be used. He will be used. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. So. Don't you think the skin tone looks good? Yeah. See the brown on the chest in between there? It's from the scraggle hairs. Mm. Our group will talk about what we're playing. Most of the time we end up covering all the roles. Um, I disagree that is needed. A group of fighters would be able to deal the hurt. 100%. Yeah. I like, so I've always wanted a group of like all fighters or something like that. Personally, I just think that'd be a lot of fun to play, like more of a, a group that seems like it would make sense to be together from the standpoint of, oh, this is a mercenary company or this is a, a wizard's guild or, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. I think that would be a lot of fun to play. Kind of interesting. But you, I feel like you need a good group for that, um, like or a specific like type of group. You know, uh, but I would love to play stuff like that. So I think I'm going to start painting this miniature. Which one's that? Oh, yep. Yeah. This is a character that... It's 10 o'clock, by the way. Ooh, I'm going to start painting this next time. Friday. Um, this is a character that my daughter wants to play. So if you have any thoughts... Color-wise. Um, let me know. I think we're going to do... A purple pink cape thing right here. She right? Love it. Probably some sort of, you know, red sparkles on this bird here. Make like it like bright. a phoenix? Yeah. That'd be cool. Gold, maybe? Golden reddish? Red. Red? I think red it would be great. But yeah, I think I'll do this one next time. I think that's a good idea. It's very, very dynamic. And she'll seal some of the miniatures she's already finished. Um, well, yeah, but that's not very interesting to watch. No, but it's going to happen. It's got to happen at some point. Maybe you just do it before we go live. Sure. <laughs> at some point, I'll do something like that. We need to seal them. But yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm just going to finish my... Skin color on this guy, and then I'm calling it good. But I like it. I came up with a good color, I think, for skin tone. But it's not really the demon thing I wanted to go for, unfortunately. Yeah? Not right. quite what you were thinking? No, it's normal. It's a normal skin tone. It's like a, it's pretty pale, too, actually. I mean, it's not like as white as some of the ones you've done. But it's a pale skin tone. But I think it looks good for a skin tone using that water peach, orange, and white. Yeah, I was thinking it looked a little orange. The skin tone? Yeah. I think it looks actually pretty realistic. Let me see. Look at him. Yeah, I suppose. You know, because you got red in your skin tone. You know? Shoot. I get that. It's hard for me to determine because I'm just... Pale? White. You're like, I look in the mirror and there is no red. There's just paleness. Just white. Just glow in the dark white. Yeah, basically that's kind of how I feel. It'd be kind of cool if you could glow in the dark. If I glowed in the dark. Yeah. You don't think that'd be awesome if you could glow in the dark? No, that'd be terrible. That'd be awesome. 
be weird. It'd be a superpower. Like bioluminescent skin or something. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, and then you, like, you get, like, black lights in your house just because of how cool it would look. Everybody else would think it's cool, and you would get annoyed with it. I wouldn't. Why would I get annoyed with it? No, I mean, like, whoever had it, they'd get annoyed. You think so? Yeah. Why? I don't think so. Why not? I don't know. I think it'd be a pretty cool power, personally. I think you're weird. So, anyways, um, we will be doing this again on Friday for sure. Um, there's... Thursday, I am not sure. I'm, I might try to go live and do some prep for my Saturday game. Uh, might start using some World Anvil on Thursday and showing, sharing my screen. And I'll probably just use this and turn the miniature painting camera into the screen share. And obviously, Paula's camera won't be there. And so then you can see what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, so if you want to watch that, let me know in the, the comments. And... Uh, Target man glows for easy aiming. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, then Friday we are going to be painting again some more. And uh, yeah. So I, again, thank you for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're not on the Discord, join our Discord. The link should be in the description below. Uh, if not, uh, if you go to any of our social media, especially our Twitter, um, there's a pinned tweet with all the links to our social media. You can follow us on all of them. I post, if I'm going live that night, I, right now I post a image that says we're going live. Uh, we got a game tomorrow night. So lots of stuff going on. So again, thanks for watching and we will see you guys next time. Game Bye. on. Bye.